Here's the DJI Digital A. Here is the DJI FPV Combo. It's the latest highly anticipated product from DJI, and I'm gonna guide you through all of its features and specifications. Then I'm gonna take it out for some test flights and show you what it's like in action. And then I'm gonna tell you if you should buy one. Hi, I'm Eric from Drone Services Canada, and I'm gonna show you around the new DJI FPV Combo. I've been flying drones for about six years now, both as a hobbyist and as a professional. I got into FPV drones about three or four years ago now, and I do work both in the cinematic and industrial drone sectors. I use DJI products in pretty much all areas of my work, and I'm really excited to find out what they've come up with here. If you're here, you probably know what a drone is by now, but what is an FPV drone? FPV stands for first person view, of course. This isn't a new concept by any means. We usually see people flying drones with some sort of screen device, like a tablet or a phone, and that's a type of FPV. But this drone borrows much of its design from the FPV racing drone world, which has been steadily moving from a hobbyist endeavor to a real sport every year. So this new DJI FPV combo drone sits somewhere between a racing drone and a more common camera drone. By camera drone, I mean something like this DJI Mini 2. This is the most common style of consumer drone out there, and the current models are pretty impressive in technology. They have high definition, stabilized cameras, nicely integrated software, long lasting batteries, automatic shots, subject tracking, obstacle avoidance, GPS, the ability to safely return home on their own, pretty much the works. On the other hand, FPV drones have typically been homemade and extremely DIY. Even if you buy a pre-built FPV drone, you need to have a lot of extra things before you can get it in the air. This new DJI package has come up with a really great solution to many of those hurdles. When I'm flying my FPV drone in a park and someone approaches me because they're interested in what I'm doing, one of the first questions I'm usually asked is, how much does something like that cost? This is a tricky question for me to answer because the drone itself isn't that expensive, but everything else you need, batteries, remotes, goggles, chargers, spare parts, not to mention the time and patience required to learn basic electronics and poorly supported computer software makes it a really hard and expensive hobby to get into. DJI has solved these problems with this kit for someone who really just wants to get started without a lot of hassle. Let's talk about each part of the kit and then I'll compare that to a more typical FPV drone. So this battery charger, is just like all other DJI products. It has a connector, which you connect to the battery, and then you just plug it into the wall. And there's a couple of USB ports on it. These are the goggles from the DJI FPV kit. These are the version two goggles, although they seem exactly the same as DJI's version one digital goggles. The only difference seems to be uh, in the features. Um, the screens themselves seem almost identical, although according to the specs, they're slightly has higher resolution and slightly faster frame rate. I'm not sure if any other hardware has changed other than it broadcasts at 2.4 gigahertz now for longer range. There is now a way to hook them up via USB type C cable to your smartphone, and that will allow you to export a picture in real time. Other than that, they're the same. If there's an AV input for analog, the connector for the battery, the controls for the menu, back button, the record button, channel selection button, SD card slot, IPD adjustment. The foam is replaceable. I find it a little bit hard, although the goggles I've had for a year and a half, it has softened up and it's much more comfortable. These antenna unscrew to make it easier to carry. Any left-hand circular polarized antennas will work if they have the correct connector. The remote is a game controller style remote. The gimbal sticks can be put in the handle for easy storage. It assembles quickly. The antenna goes up like this. There are switches for all the various features on the drone. You can adjust the feel of the gimbal on the back by opening up this pad and adjusting it with an included Allen wrench. Most radios used in FPV are similar to this. They're bulky, although I do like the size of the gimbals. Maybe it's just something I'm used to. A lot of people fly with the pinch style. The DJI FPV drone comes with a 4K camera on a one axis gimbal. It also has electronic stabilization built in for steady footage. You can adjust the angle of the camera with the remote, which is a unique feature and could be useful when we talk about it as a cinematic platform. 
A common FPV drone will have two cameras, a low resolution camera that is either analog or digital for the pilot, a way to mount a second camera like a GoPro or a similar action camera strapped to the top for high definition video. This has advantages in being able to customize the camera to what you're actually shooting, which can significantly increase the cost of your drone and the stabilization can require extra steps after the fact. DJI has taken all of that out of the equation and hopefully this camera will be good enough to get some really great cinematic shots because I think that's where it's gonna come into play as a professional drone. FPV drones tend to have small but powerful motors to enable the greatest speed and maneuverability. The DJI FPV drone seems to have similar size motors and five inch propellers. This is more similar to a typical camera drone where you don't get much choice. They're optimized for the aircraft and the task. On our hobbyist drones, there are so many motor and propeller combinations to infinitely tweak the power and performance of your drone. We tend to want that to tweak our setup for the exact feel that we're looking for. That's somewhere that this drone isn't really suited. Other than your ability to adjust the rate, which is how quickly the drone responds, there aren't many other performance options that you can tweak. It basically flies the way DJI intended it to fly. The frame is a very unique design for an FPV drone. The battery is inserted through the main structure and the frame seems to be made with a very stiff plastic. I'm not sure what's inside, but the rigidity feels good. Plastic can be protects the electronics and apparently all the parts are modular and replaceable. I'm not sure how well this would fare in collision, but it looks like it would do much better than any other typical camera drone. Those drones aren't meant to crash, and are very delicate to even the slightest stress. The frame is another part of an FPV drone which you can customize and change to the purposes of the drone. Generally, they're made of carbon fiber for durability, but also meant to be pushed hard and expected to crash and break. One of the decisions you make when you're building one of these drones is whether or not you can easily change an arm in the field. I'm not sure if the DJI drone is field repairable, but we'll have to see how durable it turns out to be. The DJI FPV drone has all of its electronics hidden under its canopy. I assume it's running a proprietary flight controller and software. The same as other camera drones, the user doesn't really have to think about the electronics at all, just how to turn it on and off and how to use all the features. On a hobbyist FPV drone, again, you have the choice of everything, which can be overwhelming, from dozens of hardware manufacturers to at least four commonly used flight control firmware and software packages. You practically need a degree in computers or a lot of patience to be able to make everything work. There's a great community for support, but very little from the manufacturers. From soldering all the tiny wires to, to making sure that the right port is selected in the software for the little wire that you hooked up a minute ago, it can be a real nightmare that a beginner might get really discouraged by. On our hobbyist drones, you have a lot of choice when it comes to batteries. We generally strap on a battery that has the voltage we want for the motors that we chose and the propellers that we chose and has the right weight and capacity which will get us the performance that we're looking for. These batteries are highly volatile and you need to take many precautions when charging them from having fireproof containers to specialized hobby chargers. We need to monitor their health very carefully. Bad and damaged batteries are probably the biggest cause of damage in this industry. The DJI drone has an intelligent battery which is much safer it won't let you overcharge it or discharge it too much, and it monitors its own health, much like the batteries on the last several generations of camera drones. Not to mention a typical racing drone might get three to four minutes of flight time when flying aggressively, and the new DJI drone will probably get triple that. Up until the release of the DJI digital FPV system in the summer of 2019, we all flew with analog cameras and transmitters. Analog had the advantage of being relatively cheap and very quick. The amount of time it takes the image to get from the camera to your eyes is really important when you're flying quickly in close proximity to things. Analog video was relatively low resolution and was very prone to signal interference and breakup. The other half of the equation was your control link. There are a lot of different protocols and radios. There are also many different receivers of various qualities. You'd have to know things about antenna polarities, placements, and transmission frequencies. The DJI Digital FPV system removed a lot of those barriers. The picture was suddenly high definition and incredibly stable. It was much less prone to interference and there was an integrated control link for their own radio that removed a lot of the hassle. The new DJI FPV drone combo goes an extra step by including an even higher definition video, automatic channel selection, and long range control link. You as a consumer don't even need to link the radio to the drone, it's already done. On a typical FPV drone, there aren't many safety features at all. Most have a routine that they will attempt if they lose connection with the control. I set mine to just fall out of the sky because there aren't many other options. Thankfully, this doesn't happen to me much with the DJI FPV system. There's a feature which will shut it down if it crashes or if the propellers were on wrong immediately after takeoff 
And if you're savvy and you want to wire up a GPS antenna and spend some time with the software, you might be able to get it to perform a rudimentary return to home routine if everything goes well. With the new DJI FPV combo, you have many, many safety features. It will warn you if you're flying near an airport or some other area you should be aware of, or it has the ability to prevent from crashing into obstacles in front or below you with sensors. It has an emergency brake feature, which will immediately stop the drone and have it hover in place. It has excellent GPS and very precise return to home. Just make sure you set the return to home altitude higher than any obstacles out there. The difference between most consumer drones and an FPV drone is mostly the full manual control you get over the FPV drone. This is extremely difficult to master and takes many hours of flying and crashing and rebuilding to get the hang of. There are several simulators available if you have a gaming computer that can help, but there's no substitute for the real thing. DJI also does provide a simulator for you to practice. The new DJI FPV combo has three main flight modes to help you learn to fly. The first, N mode, is a stabilized mode that will hold position in the air using GPS. This mode will allow you to fly around without worrying too much about getting into trouble. If you release the sticks or press the emergency brake, it will just hover in place and wait for your next move. It also has all of the sensors turned on and won't let you get too close to the ground or an obstacle of any sort. You'll also get an indication on your screen when you approach an obstacle in yellow as you get close and red if you get too close. The control stick inputs are also made much easier with the computer doing some fancy work to give you the same look and feel of manual flight. The next mode is S or sport mode. It's pretty much the end mode, but a bit faster and the obstacle avoidance is turned off. It'll still do some position holding and won't let you get into too much trouble. The M or manual mode is only for when you're fully confident that you really know what you're doing. It involves assigning the switch to actually turn on the M mode. You also have to confirm in the goggles that you know what you're doing to unlock the end mode. Every time you want to get into manual mode, it makes you position your control sticks very precisely in an on-screen overlay for a few seconds. My guess is that an absolute beginner wouldn't be able to do this very easily, and it's probably a good thing. However, I personally find it very annoying and wish I could just leave it in manual mode. The app that runs on your Android or iOS device is essentially a modified version of the DJI Fly app that we use to fly a Mavic Mini or a Mavic Air. So far, the only thing I can do with it is change a few of the settings, which are all available in the goggles anyway. But it's nice to be able to output the signal from the goggles to a smart device so that somebody else can watch. It looks like there may be the potential to do some other things, but that doesn't seem to be available in this firmware update. In Canada, any drone over 250 grams must be registered with the government and you need a license to fly it. The manufacturer of the drone can have their drones then comply with certain requirements, which will allow them to fly in controlled airspace or near people. Since I'm writing this before the release date, I'm not 100% sure, but I have it on good authority that this will be on the list and you'll be able to go through the right hoops to fly it legally pretty much anywhere. In the US, there's recently been a law passed which requires drones to broadcast a remote ID to identify itself. This will also likely comply with that regulation, allowing it for it to be legally operated in many more areas. I think this drone is going to be for a beginner who really thinks they want to get into FPV drone and wants to start with a really, really solid package, which will get them excellent camera and a path to learn how to fly manually without having to spend all the time and money learning all the rest of it. However, if you do ever want to get into more serious or the hobby of FPV drone, you're going to end up having to buy all that stuff anyway. It may end up being the gateway drug for those people and it removes a lot of barriers. So I think for a beginner that can afford it, it's a great package to start at the top from a very reputable company and I think it's really, really a, a, a solid quality product for that person. I think it could also be for somebody who's into cinematic. One thing that I've always wanted to do is fly out over the forest or up the side of a mountain and back down. But you're always, always risking your drone. And you're always risking your GoPro, even if you have a means uh, of finding it. If you're a few kilometers out, trying to get it down from a tree in a forest is probably not going to happen. This one, you can probably get that shot that you were looking for and trust the equipment that if you do lose connection, it will execute its return to home feature and come home for you. I think there's a lot of times 
that also as a professional cinematographer, when my client requires that I fly in a specific location, which I couldn't get the certification in Canada, at least to fly my FPV drone, then I would be allowed to fly this and get that same shot and be able to do all the paperwork and do it legally. So I really think it's for those people. I think anybody that's a serious FPV drone pilot that comes from racing or freestyle flying or from the hobby who loves to have choice and loves to build and rebuild, this isn't for you. I think the goggles are excellent. It would be great if they made the radio compatible with the previous air units, but I don't think that it is. But I don't think you'll like how this flies. So I'm going to do a test now. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to fly it myself and give you my own thoughts. I'm also going to show you what an absolute beginner, somebody who's never flown an FPV drone, see how well they do with the first with the first run. I'm going to lift off line of sight in normal mode. Normal mode, basically, it just flies as if it's a Mavic. The position holds. The altitude holds. DJI is good at this type, this type of drone. I'm going to fly around with the goggles on. It is telling me there's a nearby obstacle with a yellow bar. I guess that's probably that pole. If I fly towards it, it turns red. I'm going to get really close. Doesn't seem to be actually breaking me too much, so I'm gonna kind of approach with a bit of speed. Okay, so the obstacle avoidance. Yeah, it won't let me actually run into it. As I push forward, it goes into the red zone. And won't let me hit it. It's pretty close there. So I can cruise around in this mode. Uh, the obstacle avoidance is pretty sensitive. Let's see if we can do something that we could do in a regular FPV, in a regular freestyle drone. So let's see if it'll allow me to go between these trees. So yeah, it'll allow that. You can do a little bit of proximity. You do see the home point overlaid, which is really nice to be able to see your home point overlaid in three dimensions. So if you're flying somewhere new or if you're new and you don't remember where you were standing, that can actually be a, a problem. So yeah, it automatically slows you down as you approach obstacles. And then I guess it's trusting you to get around them. It beeps. Hmm, it's letting me get awfully close. I feel a little bit nervous about pushing forward any farther. Yeah, I think that there's a point where it, it doesn't stop you completely, but it slows you right down and you'd have to actually intentionally crash. So this is top top speed in normal mode. So top speed allowing me to just cruise around. I'm only using the yaw stick to cruise sideways. Let's see if we can get a view of the sunset. I guess it's stopped setting a little bit. Uh, I'm going to cruise down the road a little ways and see if we can get ourselves into any trouble. So, it says I'm about 33 meters, about 100 feet in the air. I don't want to fly over these people's houses, I'm just going to fly over the river here. So, no signal breakup. Nothing special.
I'm almost 500 meters away. I'm only 24 meters up. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to come back in sport mode. So this turns the obstacle avoidance off. So sport mode and we're now coming back at 25 meters per second. 26, 27. So that seems to be top speed in sport mode. So in sport mode, it is definitely sportier. You can't really do anything tight. Just trying to be aggressive there, but. Okay, it was warning me about the the obstacle, but it would have let me hit it, I guess, because it's the avoidance is turned off. Okay. So, sport mode. I don't I don't think any beginner would have a hard time with this. Um, if we were going to try some sort of chase footage or cinematic footage, I guess it could keep you pretty smooth. But as a as a proper manual freestyle pilot, I think I would prefer manual mode. So I'm going to go into manual mode here. So. Switching to manual mode involves playing a little on-screen video game. So this allows for full three-dimensional control of the drone. So it allows you to get nice and close to the ground if you want. Won't prevent you from hitting things. So, see if I can try some of my typical freestyle tricks. like it has a little bit of control like when you drop the throttle the throttle doesn't come all the way down to zero Let's see what the top speed is in this mode thirty six thirty seven meters per second. So that really uses up battery when you give her like that. So I've been recording for over nine minutes. If I cruise, apparently I can still get, according to the thing, four and a half minutes. I still have 32% battery. I'm trying to learn how to fly it smooth. Definitely isn't as smooth as my, uh, my usual drones. So 
so I just got a message in my ears I've got headphones on battery is low the aircraft will go to the home point in 10 seconds so let's see if it actually does that I'm gonna pretend like I don't care I'm gonna stay nice and high altitude here just in case something happens I'm gonna fly around over here So, it lied about the 10 second thing. Okay. So I'm going to try the emergency brakes. So what if we were in a dive? Wow, that was pretty impressive. So, emergency brakes are pretty impressive. I got my finger on the emergency brake again. Let's give it a try if we were heading for some problems. Oh no, I'm heading towards a wall. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so we got 10% 10% battery, auto return to home in four seconds, three, two, one, low battery return to home. So, critical low battery. All right, I have to bring this home manually. Oh, there we go. Right down to 3% battery, 13 minutes-ish flight time. Awesome. We're here with Michael Brown of Drone Services Canada. Michael, Yay! <laughs> he has never flown an FPV drone. And when I say never, I mean once he has crashed an analog drone way back in the day when the goggles fogged up and he had no experience. So I got dizzy. I still think that uh, that doesn't count. No. So um, today he's going to fly the new DJI FPV combo. He has his advanced drone license. In Canada. He's yeah. uh, an excellent Mavic and Phantom and industrial drone pilot. So he knows how to fly a drone, but has spent literally zero time flying FPV. This new tech. Cool. So it has just normal drone tendency, I guess, to self-level. It's nice. I don't feel like I'm going to crash anytime, any second. Because with the other FPV, you're you're committed as soon as you launch. That's <laughs> scary. So just going to uh, go up in altitude. I don't know how high are those. You can see your altitude information bottom left. Oh yeah, I guess a good idea for beginners is to like sit down you want to lean or, or, or lean against something. Just so I can have a reference of, so I don't fall down. Okay. So where should I go? Anywhere, I guess. Yep. Let's go for a rep over here. Cool. Try to stay away from those power lines. Cool, that has the home point located in your map, which is cool. 
Wow, I'm so not used to this movement. Makes me a little dizzy. See, that's something you wouldn't do with a Mavic. What? That low to the ground. No. <laughs> See, I tried to just go over top of that thing, but it actually hit the brakes for me, which I didn't really like. Zero degrees. I don't even know what the sport mode is. Uh, switch. This one here? Yeah. Okay. In the middle is the... Well, if I go into sport, will it just start floating? No. Nope. She's windy. Sport mode, obstacle avoidance unavailable. Yeah. Okay. So it still does position hold. It's just no more. It's just the brakes are off now. So what do you want me to do? Hit the air brakes? Yeah, give it a try. Just tap that switch. That sounded like an air brake. Yeah. I'm just trying not to fall down. Okay. Right now. <laughs> Because it's very disorienting if you're not used to it. It's not how you usually fly drones, or I'm experienced with. It feels like I'm on a roller coaster. I hope I'm not sick at my dentist later on. But yeah, that was pretty quick. This is something that you would crash definitely with traditional FPVs. Let's see if I can get even closer here. I think I landed on it. Nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like I didn't, I didn't crash, which was nice. And when I did feel dizzy, I could stop and just take a rest for a moment to let my eyes and balance get kind of back to normal. But I think with a little bit, little bit of time, you get used to that and you could fly for longer probably and, and have more fun in the air. So basically, as an experienced drone pilot, you're instantly flying FPV. Instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Like no discomfort whatsoever. No discomfort. I don't feel like I was putting the drone in danger. That's for sure. Because I know even with the, the obstacle avoidance, it's like that little security blanket knowing that I'm not going to crash into anything. I bet you if I was going fast enough and not being careful, I might clip something. Mm -hmm. Clip a line or clip a tree or something like that because I'm just going too fast, too close. That's probably going to happen in a lot of occasions. But but if you take if it, it a little bit warmer, I would like I'd fly another battery for sure. Like and yeah. So so there you have it. Yeah. First first flight, no problem with a little bit of experience with a drone. Well, a lot of experience, but I don't think you need that much to make this thing go. Yeah, it's very easy. All right. Easy. That's cool. Back to the studio. This is Christoph, a cinematographer friend of mine. He's going to give you some of his thoughts. Hello. Hi. Put my mask on here. Authentic uh, hello. This is as real as it gets. Oh, I love this. I don't like that at all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was nerve wracking. It seems like the angle actually seems pretty good. It's like a nice wide field of view. Yeah, I'm going, I can go one, pretty fast. 150, I think. You know, you wouldn't want to be chasing a car like this, but for like freestyle acro stuff, the angle actually seems okay. Yeah. 400 meters, okay. I'm not gonna, I mean, it's crystal clear still. And I, I mean, I'm pretty high up, but. Yeah. I think a little lower. I just don't want to put it down here because it's like on the other side of a fence. Yeah. Um, yeah, easily 450 meters probably. And not, not a, and yeah, they did not even no drop. Well, let's talk about the image. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind so, of like, yeah, the thing that I was so like the most curious about because you have I mean, seen it in 4K 60 frames a second, like it's high, it's default, yeah, default highest bit rate yeah. and everything. So um, I know there's a few other uh, a few other modes which we can mm -hmm. talk about. And di I don't know if you downloaded that other footage. I, yeah. I shot it sort of early yeah, on. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. Like so, the good things I would say, like the dy dynamic range looks pretty good for. You know an action camera um it's i would say it's pretty similar to like a phantom 4 
um, that would that can do 4K 60. I would say the Mavic too, but it doesn't. The Mavic doesn't do 4K 60. But like in terms of the like a still from the image, it looks about as good as a Mavic image. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what I was hoping for and what I expected in terms of like the dynamic range. The uh, I would say also like the the sharpness of like what I'm looking at the stuff that you sent me. It looks good. Like it's not like overly sharpened, but it's not like soft either. It's kind of like right in that range that it should be in. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are like the good things. It's like a, a good looking picture when you like freeze frame it. There are a couple downsides. I think, um, the obvious one is that the props are in the shot, at least in some of the yeah. clips. Um, which, almost all of it. Yeah. Which is, and yeah. I've, I've heard there's like a mode where you can get that, but it's obviously going to be cropping it in a little bit. And like, I still, for this kind of footage, I like it to be as wide as possible. So that was kind of interesting yeah. that, you know, you can see the props in the shot. I, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um, the like the frames per second like i'm surprised because i expect or i i imagine that this is, they're gearing this towards people who want to get it into into the specifically for cinematic stuff and the fact mm -hmm. that it doesn't do 24 frames per second with like a slower shutter um it w is like a flat a red flag for me like i i usually shoot at 24p because you're not really slowing this footage down like you're you're going fast and you want it to look fast so you're not you know mm -hmm. maybe if you're doing like a mountain biker or something like that you'd want to slow it down but generally you want to shoot it at a you know the frames per second that the, you're viewing it at so and, and also the fact that you can't slow the shutter down um yeah and then and then i mean like the the root of that problem is that the camera that you're that it's filming with is the camera you're using for fpv so yeah. it's not even like you would want it to be a slower frames per second because it's going to be hard to fly it if it's you know you're getting motion blur and stuff like the advantage of regular fpv drones is you have your fpv camera which is you know so that you can pilot it and then you have your your filming camera which you can dial in the settings to be as cinematic as possible and the two are like the settings that you would do right. for those two are, are pretty different no you would usually expose for the sky so which means like yeah you know the sky is look is perfectly exposed and then the, the ground and stuff it might be a little bit underexposed but that's kind of the cinematic look um but yeah. you can't fly like that if you can't no. see where you're going so <laughs> yeah um so yeah that's interesting um the stabilization uh it's really good because i remember when i was flying yeah. it felt like it was going to be a lot more shaky like it almost mm -hmm. felt like flying a maybe not like a, a drone that needed to be tuned better, but just like a, a drone that I wasn't used to the tuning. So it was a lot yeah. more jumpy than I than I wanted it to be. And the stabilization got a lot of that out of it, but it still doesn't have that like magic that Real Steady has. Uh, and the, yeah. the fact also that the exposure like on that note, the, that the exposure isn't locked also means yeah. it's kind of, uh, you know, it's unpredictable. So for cinematic stuff, you know, you'd, you'd want it to be set uh, and not like adjusting as you're going into bright and dark spaces. So that's right. kind of so problematic. Uh, yeah. So personally, like uh, as somebody who already knows how to fly freestyle drones or quads, um, I don't think I would incorporate this in its current state into my workflow. Okay. But I do think if somebody is just getting started, they don't own any FPV drones, but they do kind of fly Mavics and, and Phantoms and stuff like that. It's like a, a good drone if, you know, as like a stepping stone getting to get into yeah. FPV, but yeah, personally, but what about uh, the, the content creator? Is that like that kind of professional? Do you think they could get something out of this? Somebody like Casey Neistat, who doesn't care what the image looks like. He just cares about getting the shot. Perfect for this, for that, right. you know, like he, cinem cinematography is not, he's more of a visual storyteller. And he doesn't care like he just needs it to be documented in some way so i think somebody who kind of has that approach to him where it's just like get the shot no matter what it's good mm -hmm. for that kind of stuff and there are a lot of people right. you know for this like but i'm a cinematographer first so yeah it's like the image quality and like how it looks is like the more important than the flying experience for me so yeah and here are some thoughts from prince fpv a hardcore fpv pilot who's been flying hobby airplanes for more than a decade and we'll see what he thinks about it. All right, how about I give you guys a little background? So I've been flying radio controlled for pretty close to 20 years now. Started off with RC helicopters, 3D RC planes, then just went straight into FPV once it came out pretty much. Okay, we're recording this time, guys. So it's gonna be weird at first because you're not in manual mode. I know. 
Okay, now I'm gonna switch into manual. Now we got acro, so it's already, okay. the tune is already really bad, I can tell. I'm gonna go for a normal power loop. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very, 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 very shaky. And that was just on a slow power loop, so I'm gonna send it for a roll. Yeah, it, it needs, you need to let us tune it. Okay, so you can kind of, if they let us tune it, I think you could freestyle it better. Hey, eh? yeah. I think so. If they let us tune it though, because it needs tuning bad. But uh, yeah, this would be good for a beginner. I'm gonna see how fast I can go. Oh, that was horrible. Oh my God. Yeah, this is not for any type of freestyle. Um, cinematic, you'd still need to tune it. Oh no, that's horrible. So if they let us tune it, we could, cause you hear that, eh? Yeah. No, it is cold out, but that's still no excuse. It's not that cold. No. It's above zero right now, so. Yeah. So this is low latency mode. Okay, so now we have a different mode. All right, I'm gonna have to put it back in acro. I can, I can definitely feel the difference. In low yeah, does it feel better? Yeah, way yeah. better. Yeah. But like, it still feels tuned really bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. But the, just more as a, for doing a freestyle. Yeah, I see it's got a lot of like bobble side to side, every direction it bobbles. Like if, if this was my normal drone, I'd be killing shit, just ripping around it. I feel like, I, again, it's, I don't think that's what it's designed for. It rolls weird. Um, yeah. Overall like, though, I guess for somebody who to be safe would be good. Um, like I said, if DJI allows us to tune it. Anyway, pretty cool for a long flight. Yeah, no, holy crap. I'd never fly one of my racing drones that long. Not even with what you were doing here. No. Like it would just ever. No, no, even long. that way. No, the battery would be dead by now. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe if they let us tune it, like open up the options so we can tune the, the flight controller better. Um, uh, I don't know if it's just inhibited because of what style of drone it is and the features it has. It might be part of the reason, but yeah. you know, um, for a beginner to keep it safe, it's not a bad drone. The drone itself needs some work on it. For, yeah. for, even for cinematic, in my opinion, because the smoother the drone flies, the better that stabilization you put into it is going to work. So yeah. uh, let us tune the drone. That would be awesome. Other than that, I mean, it's not bad. Um, uh, um, so anyway, answer the question. Does it, does it freestyle? No, excuse me. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, beep, uh, all that good stuff. No, it doesn't. It doesn't freestyle well, not at all. It, it's definitely not a freestyle drone. Um, it's, it's because of the stabilization, you could use it for cinematic, but if you could deal with all that prop wash and bobble, the cinematic would be that much better. So okay. maybe you should let some of us tune it or give some of your, your testers a chance to tune it. That'd be awesome. And then one other quick question. Yeah, yeah. Do, could somebody learn how to freestyle with this? Yes, totally, totally. It would, it, so it is a good so beginner, definitely. This is better than a simulator because it's real life. Oh, for sure it is. And it'll get you there. Anything's better than a simulator. It's and really it'll get fun. you there. Yes. And yes. as you saw in yesterday's video, with the absolute first time FPV pilot nailing it, first time, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. You know? Yeah, it's safe. It's safe. Is what I think what matters is the fact that it's safe. With that being said, guys, be safe, fly safe. See you in the next video. It feels like a very safe way to fly FPV. Before this existed, you were definitely going to crash on your first several flights. Now that this exists, there's a way to get into this that I actually think won't cost you as much. The rumor is this is going to come in at around $1,300 US for this whole combo with the goggles. And I think by the time you really get started in FPV, you're going to spend, I, I think, I mean, you can spend absolute bottom dollar and get into the hobby for maybe a few hundred dollars with a crappy pair of box goggles and and a small analog tiny whoop drone and a little crappy transmitter but if you want anything that's good anything that can get good video anything that you can strap a gopro onto especially if you factor in the cost of the gopro you're going to spend about the same amount of money no matter what now that other method i think you'll end up with a lot more frustration it's a lot steeper learning curve 
Everybody I know has spent thousands and thousands of dollars before they actually get good enough to film anything smoothly or anything professionally. So I think that this drone is definitely going to get you there. For the, the same money, if you're interested in flying FPV, if you already have some aptitude for drones and you realize that you're going to continue, this is an excellent place to start because it'll get you flying freestyle or racing drones with manual control. And then the goggles are compatible with the rest of their equipment. And we're hoping that that radio will be compatible. If not, there's lots of options for radios on the market. And I think this is an excellent way to get into the hobby. So uh, bottom line is I don't think I want it except for a few occasions when I want to do a shot and have the reliability of this kind of drone but even then it'll depend on if the camera can get what I what I need it to get who's it for it's for beginners who else is it for eh, I don't know nobody else I think it's just for beginners and that's my opinion thanks so that's going to be the new DJI FPV combo. Thanks a lot to Brendan at CG Magazine for letting me have the opportunity to share this with you guys. I think this is the best way that a beginner can get into this hobby. This, this really is the first all-in-one integrated package that actually has a really, really nice quality camera, an immersive experience. Um, you're gonna, it's, it's all in one. It's got the safety features, the control. Uh, you've seen all the footage. You see that it looks, it looks great. I mean, it's, it's not gonna be what Hollywood wants, but it's definitely a really, really fantastic way to get started. DJI has really hit it out of the park with this one for a beginner package. Um, thanks a lot to Mike from Drone Services Canada for, for helping me with this video. Thanks to uh, PJ Prince F FPV. Go check him out on YouTube in the link in the description below. Again, CG Magazine, they've been great. Please check them out in the link below. Uh, Christoph from Low Key Studio and maybe someday YouTube channel. Check out his videos. Um, go subscribe to everybody and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.